These blacktails, they're really weary, wiry animals, and they are so nervous and skittish, and it's dry out there in California. One little crunch, and they are gone to the next ridge. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week we headed due west, heavy west, Extremely like west. way west. Like California so you can't west. go any further. Yeah, northern California. We were hunting blacktails for the very first time. Yeah, it was really cool. We headed out there with Arrow 5 Outfitters. Yes. RJ was joining us. Tina Marie and Jim were out there. Jim and Tina Marie. No, Tina Marie and Jim. Right, Tam? Come on. She knows it. It's like Ralph and Vicky. It's Vicky and Ralph. This week's lucky logo is Zeiss. Zeiss. Oh, the ultimate in optics. I mean, just clear as clear could be. <laughs> so watch for the Zeiss logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. But now, I mean, when we were heading out there, we weren't really sure what to expect. We weren't sure the terrain or anything like that, because we're talking California. We're thinking like Hollywood, L.A., no. Redwood trees, lots of hills, ravines, fog. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. Beautiful countryside. I mean, it was really cool. I guess maybe we, you don't realize that there's that many blacktails. Right. Oh, my yeah, gosh. There were deer everywhere. There were. So we should just get going? Yeah. All right, let's get going to California. California. California, eh? I, I still think it should be <laughs> Ralph and Vicky. It's Vicky and Ralph in California. Jim and Tina Marie. Most of the time, back in the Midwest, you're going to shoot your white-tailed deer between 12 and 18 yards. That's it. Drop your arm. When you start traveling out west, you really have to start practicing and getting your accuracy even further distances. There's going to be times you may be shooting 50, 60 yards away. So try to practice way in advance, get used to it, and get comfortable with shooting longer distances. Shoot high, shoot low, you know, get up on a ridge, lose your balance a little bit. Try to get in all those different, different situations because that perfect broadside, standing legs, you know, feet down on the ground, most time it ain't gonna happen in a hunt situation. Good job. Okay, go grab it. How's your confidence right now? Stand straight, make sure your bow is level, and keep that arm up, okay? Take your time. Sweetheart, that's what we need, okay? At home, he was shooting way up here. Great reason to make sure that you shoot your bow, your equipment, whether it's a bow or a gun. When you get to a spot that you're hunting, to make sure that something else isn't different. Okay. We're checking cameras and checking the blinds. It's got a doghouse set up, and we just saw two little bucks, a doe and two fawns. Hey, we're here in Northern California hunting blacktails. Three by three, or what you call an eight point. Man, that's a that's a nice looking deer. Huh? That's a good looking deer. I don't know. Yeah, he'll be a he'll be a great buck for RJ there. Cool. Just spotted a couple more bucks feeding up on that hillside, and what, what Jim was telling us was, is I mean, these deer, you find them in one of these ditches, and they pretty much maintain in that area. So what we might do is get up there, try to bump them, and then turn around, sit up in the mare step ground blind, and he said that's a he said that's a massive management deer for RJ. This is so cool. It takes a definite step backwards when you know that your child is gonna start hunting with you. And, and I mean, we were getting RJ, he was shooting his Hoyt, his confidence level was increased, everything was going good, and I mean, I wanted everything to be perfect, and you know that as a parent. I mean, so, man, we were getting every, the blind, the Ameristep blind, we were raking, we were clearing brush, we were getting everything set up because I think I was way more nervous than he was. A tree had fallen down right here, 
and you can see that a lot of the deer are feeding on this and that's one of the tricks I mean you're checking out trying to locate the feeding pattern well it's pretty obvious when you see this tree and you see all these leaves we set up a spy point we got our mare step blind set in here tucked in really nice you got a lot of cover natural cover and now it's a waiting game we'll see what happens the camera's gonna tell us everything so if we've got a good buck feeding on this we'll move in on it Good luck. Thank you. Oh, I like you. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Not... What are you going to remember? Arms up. Back. Keep the arm Level. back. Straight. Pull through. Okay. He's going to. Who zippers you when I'm not around? <laughs> My gosh. It's one of the cleanest hunting, uncrowded hunting trucks I've ever opened the door to. I'm used to all kinds of stuff inside there. There's nothing in there but Kenneth's backpack. Ralph and RJ headed out on their hunt and Jim and I are going to a different part of the ranch. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as we get through the other gate, there's a two by two right there on the hillside at 20 yards. I almost hit that trigger. I could have done 20 yards. Could have been my first black tail, 20 yards. I hope I don't regret this one. You know, our first sit in our Marista blind, I mean, we, we were all jacked up. We were, and I mean, we had some does and we had a spike come in and, and it wasn't what they wanted to take on the ranch, but I can tell you that RJ was so jacked up that he would have took a doe, the sp he was ready to do anything. But because you're, you know, you're on a ranch and you gotta, you gotta follow their management rules, we're like, RJ, we gotta wait, we gotta wait for that, for that other guy. You know, one of the things that you have to learn as hunting is you have to be adaptable. And I mean, the more we were driving around, the more we were seeing more, more deer and more game is, you know, we had to make a decision and it was either sit and wait, which would be better for some or really get after it. And you know me, I like that aggressive part of the hunting. We're hunting in August, all the bucks are still in velvet, they're still in bachelor herds, which makes it a little bit harder because you have a lot more eyes still on you. We spotted this bachelor herd of bucks and we decided to go up after them. We could see the one and I got up and I went and I drew back and as I released, one of those other bucks, his eyeball saw my arrow and everything scattered. <laughs> right over his back. 
it went right over his back. It's 55 yards, it's a long shot. <laughs> I don't know that I'll find it. <laughs> Got a few bucks. Two toes. See him. You know, even though when you're spotting and stalking, you want to stay as clean as possible. We're still spraying down with our scent away. We're still washing with scent, you know, our scent-free soaps. But the reality of it is, if the wind's not in your favor, man, the gig's up. You know, like in any hunt, I mean, there's things that you have to you have to pay attention to. One, the ground was so noisy, it was so dry. Every time we had that wind in our favor, right when we were making it almost happen, you'd get a swirl or you'd get something like this. And I mean, the highest of high and the lowest of lows in milliseconds, but the reality of it is, is never give up, man, and, and keep going. And, and the bottom line here is always, always pay attention to that wind. Well, we're down to the last day, and normally that happens with me. <laughs> Either it happens the first day, or it doesn't happen till the last day. But the crazy thing was, is man, we, we got up on this high peaked ridge, and we were walking, and we, we, we had some deer down below us. Well, they sort of boogered out a little bit, and I ranged him, I got everything, I took my shot, and actually by the time my arrow got to where he was standing, he sort of moved off. Uh, so at least I, I, I think I executed a good shot. <laughs> but the target wasn't there. Yep. My blacktail trophy. Real hard to explain. Okay. I can't see my markings real good, but on my glasses, <laughs> that's not an excuse. So I had it about 60, I think, huh? 57? Oh my gosh. That's why you should just do the big old black numbers like I do. Yeah, I'm taking these, these I little just, numbers off. Mine are all beat up. All I have is like two, three, four, five. That's all I need. In this little patch of oak trees, we spotted a buck bedded down. We could see his antlers more than we could see his, his body. And we decided, hey, the wind's in our favor. It's blowing pretty hard. We'll cover some of our noise. Let's put a stalk on him. That middle oak tree that you can see, there's a buck he's bedded down. We're gonna have to crawl, go that way so we keep the tree between us and him. Tree's 77 yards. He's still bedded. I haven't seen him get up. But once we get up that hill just a little bit, he's gonna be right there. These blacktails, they're really weary, wiry animals. And I'm, they are so nervous and skittish. I mean, one little crunch, and it's dry out there in California. One little crunch, and they are gone to the next ridge. I can't see him yet. What I've realized is that stalking one of these black tails with my Hoyt in my hand has become one of the hardest challenges I've ever had. We got to 20 yards on him. He was bedded down. I decided to take a chance. I drew my bow back, and I was going to take a step out. And when I, I looked down to take a step out, because I didn't want to step on anything too noisy, and I let my bow back down. I made a noise. He took off and ran. I've had plenty of encounters up here at Arrow 5 Outfitters. Didn't get a deer? but it's been a blast. <laughs>
you know, we spotted some deer moving up on this little plateau on this ridge. So get, we swung around, we got the wind in my favor. We started going up high, you know, we're walking and trying to be as quiet as possible. Again, wind's in our favor. We don't really know what's up there. Well, we dropped Ralph off on the side of this hill that we had seen a buck up on, and we're gonna try to use some Midwest tactics. We're gonna try doing a little bit of a deer drive. I got back down around the other side of that hillside to hope to see what would happen as Ralph was actually gonna be the driver to kinda see if we can bump the deer just very slowly and casually. There was a really nice two by two right there, and I decided I'm gonna go ahead and try putting a stalk on him. I saw him, he's straight up here. So when we come up, I finally catch the movement. I, you know, I, I call my distance and I draw back. We spotted these deer up on this ridge. We weren't sure what was there. Made a stalk, got the wind in our favor. This deer comes out, I see his antlers, I'm ready, full draw. I figured a little over 30 yards or so. I released, arrow just, that beaming, beamingized him. And I mean, it was, it was all over after that. Well, this two by two decided to start walking up the hillside and we watched him walk up there. And as he got up, all of a sudden, there's three or four other bucks come running off this hillside towards us. And I look back up at the top of the hill and there's Ralph giving us thumbs up. Well, obviously he was successful up there. <sighs> all right, we hit him. I saw him go this way. That? Right here. Yeah, baby. Come on. Huh? You don't like my scream? I I scream again. You don't like my Do scream? Again. Do you have him? <laughs> Sorry, I can't up. whistle. Is he there? He's right here. See him? Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, thank you. <sighs> Oh, thank you. Way to make it happen. <laughs> oh. A four by three. Oh, he's a four by three. He's a four by, really? That's an inch. He's a five. <laughs> Look at this. Arrow five, baby. The absolute best black tail hunting you'll ever see in your life. We ain't never seen so many bucks and what great hosts. I mean, this is it. And to share it with RJ and Vicky and Kenneth and Dan and Louie and Big Jim and Tina Marie and everybody, this is. And the buck. Yeah, this is a blessing. That was cool. I that gotta tell cool. you. That was cool. I can't wait to go back to Northern California with Jim and Tina Marie because. Those blacktails are a blast to hunt. They are. It, it was, I mean, we saw them all over the place and it was just beautiful, beautiful country out there. If you happen to see the lucky logo. Zeiss, baby, the, the best optics in the world. What you need to do is you need to log on to archerschoice.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win a pair of Zeiss binoculars as well as a bunch stuff. of other stuff. Yes. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the last show of Archer's Choice yep, for Archer's the season. Yep, Archer's Choice for the season. That's right. And next week is brand new The Choice Show, and we've got a little preview to show you guys. And don't worry, next week, maybe RJ and I can make up for this week's. Hmm. Just saying. Not going to say anything. I'm going to keep quiet. Hunting is not about the trophy. It's about the challenges that we face as hunters, and it is our choice how we pursue our prey. Hunting doesn't end when you spot your game. That's when the challenge begins. Closing the distance, becoming part of your surroundings, playing the wind, being patient, and waiting for that moment of truth. From the maximum highs to the ultimate lows, there is no way of predicting how things will turn out. For us, it's about the adventure. The journey. The moments that we share as a family. This, this is, is why, why we hunt. hunt. This, this is, is our choice. choice.
Listen, no matter what, we can't thank you enough for believing in us all these years. And we are so excited to bring you more and more each and every year. And we promise we're, we're trying to get better every year, huh? We're trying. We're trying. And we're having a lot of fun doing it. But we're going to keep it real. And when we say real, we're going to show you the good, the bad, and, and the, the ugly. ugly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so thanks for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next season. Same time. Same channel. Right here on, on The Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.